And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Arrest for Emily by Beryl Firestone. pile of socks on the table. Here you are, my dear. <laughs> my dear, what a laugh you are, Orrin Reed. Thirty years of slaving on a dried-up farm. Thirty years of hating what you do and the woman you're living with. Thirty years of debt and drudgery, and you still say, my dear, weak. Weak and a man of habit. That's what you are, Orrin Reed. Don't start tonight, Emily. There's paperwork to be done, so let's 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 not start it tonight, please. Paperwork, figuring out your million dollar income tax paperwork. Last. Huh? What's that? Stuck my finger with a needle. Darning socks, darning socks, and cooking meals with not enough food. Talking to myself, living in this miserable place. I'm dried up too, Orrin. Just like the land out there, dried up and tired. We do the best we can, Emily. The good Lord made it so it'd be hard for us. There's no use trying to make it out. It can be any other way. The good Lord. It's you made it hard for us, Orrin Reed. A poor man in spirit and a poor one in what he can do. Where are you going? I don't want to listen no more. I'm going out for a minute. You come back here. You listen to what I say. A poor man. You hear me, husband? A poor man, a poor farmer. There's nothing inside you, Orrin Reed. Do you listen to what I say? No, Emily, no more. No more tonight. Oh, there'll be more tonight and the next night and the next. Until you're in your grave with the words I say spilling out of your head. Giving the only life to the land. Now, you come back here. You listen to me. You shouldn't say them things. You shouldn't talk to me that way. There was a time she had love for me when things in this house were better. And she looked at me the way a woman looks at a man. She don't look at me at all no more. Around me, through me, but never at me. Then you've got to stop talking to me that way, Emily. I ain't going to listen no more. So you might just as well not talk to me that way. Orrin, get back in here. You've got to stop talking to me that way, Emily. I'll talk whatever way the words come out. If the truth comes out in bitter words, then that's the way I'll talk. I'll get the call. Well, I'll not hear you anymore, Emily. I'll not hear you. Oh, you'll hear, all right. Whatever else you got, you got good ears in your head. Ears for listening to what I say. No, I'll not hear anymore. She won't talk to me anymore. Same things no man should be made listen to. You're putting a fire under that coffee? Land is dry, land is cracked. Well, that ain't my fault. I do the best I know how. It's no fault of mine. The crops grow sick and the... The animals grow thin. She's got no right to fault when the thing's not my doing. Who are you up out there? Man earns some rest. Man shouldn't have to hear that hardness for 30 years. He should be able to sit with his woman in quiet. Orrin, what's keeping you? No more, Emily. No more. What's that you say? No more. I'll hear no more. You making that coffee hot? What are you doing with that rifle? No more. You'll not talk to me that way again. Get that rifle away, you crazy old fool, and get the coffee. There'll be no more of your hatred in this house, Emily. No more of your nagging talk and hard words. Orrin! No more! grave in the barn, covered with lies so she can be part of the land. But now I, I'll rest a bit, have my coffee, and then sleep quiet. Good night, Emily. Good night. Never get away with it. What? What did you say? Get away with it. <laughs> well, what they say? So, so scared of death. What's that? You said? <laughs> I thought he jumped right through the phone. Oh, Dad, you're a riot. 
Now, really, you better be getting home. It's late. Okay, okay. How about a good night kiss, Mary Lee? Mm. Mm. Now, guess. Good night, Mary Lee. Good night. Don't forget our day. I won't. Good night. You'll never get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Loper Farm Supply Warehouse. Oh, hello, Arn. This is Loper. What? What was that you wanted? 200 pounds lie. Well, it's uh, after eight now, and Ted hasn't even started yet. He's got to make four or five stops first, but uh, I guess he can get to your place around 11. All right, Arn. I'll put it on your bill. Bye. Ted! Ted, come on in here before you leave. You call me, Pot? I called. You put 200 pounds of lye on the truck and take it out of the Reed place. I promised you'd be there before noon. The Reed place? But, Pa, that's on the other side of the ridge, and I got a date with Mary Lee for lunch at noon. I'll never be back in time. Now, you do as you're told. Get that lie on the truck and get it out to Arn Reed before noon. Here? Ah, oh, but, Pa, no come on. No buts. If you think you're going to be late, you can call Mary Lee for Mr. Reed. She'll wait. Can't Mr. Reed wait till this afternoon? Now, what's got into you, boy? Now, you get those orders out and stop arguing. You'll really be late. Too hot today. Just sit here in the barn and wait. 11 o'clock. Young Loper should be here soon. Maybe this afternoon will be cooler. I'll get your grave done, Emily. You'll have a decent place to rest. And, Emily, you, you, you can't scare me anymore. Trying to make me think I had a phone call last night. I I knew it was you. No, Emily, your evil's done. I won't listen to you. Lying on the floor in the parlor, a quiet tongue, still and quiet. You can't make me listen to things that, that never happened. <laughs> uh, you're going to have company, old Sarah. Emily's going to join you here in the barn. She'll be here before morning to rest with your foal that died and the chickens never born and dogs long past. <laughs> More lodges for the barn. <laughs> Miss Reed! Hey! Hey, Miss Reed! You around? In here, young loper. In the barn. Oh. oh. Hot enough for you, Mr. Reed. I'll bet it's a hundred in the shade. You bring the lie? It sure did. Where do you want it? In here. In the barn. Okay. I'll get it off the truck. I'm going to dig up the potatoes out that back there, and then I'm going to turn the soil, and uh, that's why I need it, see? I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the soil. What? You'll never get away with it. What that? What'd you say? Well, I said you'll never get away with it. Why, why you don't have a, a third what you'll need for that job. Tell you what, I'll bring you another 500 pounds tomorrow. That should do it. So you, you don't think I'll get away with it? Oh, no, sir. Not not with this much. And you didn't lie to me, Emily. There was a call. Boy... Did you say something, sir? Boy, why don't you come up the house with me? I, I got some cold beer in the, in the icebox. And go right well on a hot day like this. Take the dryness out of your mouth. Huh? Well, I don't think I want any beer, sir, but I, I tell you what I'd like to do, if you don't mind. I'd like to call my girl and tell her I'm going to be a little late for our date. If you don't mind. I don't mind a bit. You just do that now. We'll both go up the house, and while you make your call, I, I'll uh, do what I have to do. Phone's over there on the corner table. Oh, thanks, Mr. Reed. I'll just be a minute. Take your time, boy. Lots of it. Uh -huh. Hold on, honey. Hold on. What's what's so terrible? What's happened? Oh, Ted, it's your pa. Pa? Well, what about pa? What's happened to pa? There's been an accident. What? Accident? He's hurt bad, Ted, in the county hospital. They called me about a half hour ago to find out if I knew where you were. Huh? He wants you, Ted. He's bad. I'll leave right now. You tell pa I'm leaving right now. I'll, I'll see you at the hospital. 
Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, I I'm going. I've got to get back to town right away. No, no, wait, wait. Hold on, boy. You ain't going nowhere. Mr. Reed, I've got to. It's my pa. He's hurt. You stay where you are, boy. Huh? I think save you. Mr. Reed, put, put that rifle away. I I've got to get to town. My, my I pa. I said hold, boy. You ain't leaving. I, I don't know what you're doing. But I've I got to go see my pa. Stop, boy. Stop. Don't start out that door. I, I told Mr. you, Reed. stop. I told you. Now, the next shot's going to be closer, boy. There's things to do. And I don't want to kill you now. Kill me? What for? What's it all about? Well, you close the door, boy. But close the door and come in here. But please, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, my five pa's hurt bad. He's at the county hospital hurt bad. He needs me. I've got to go to get to him. Well, that's a shame. It certainly is, and I'm right sorry about it. But it would have been better... If a strong back boy like you hadn't been snooping around where it didn't belong, saying things he had no right to say. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You like to talk on the telephone, don't you? Like to what? call people in the middle of the night? Tell them things you got no right knowing about? What, what, what things? Talking about what don't things? Don't think I'll get away with it, do you, young lover? I'm talking about... Well, last night... Oh, Mr. Reed, M Mr. Reed, I I'm sorry, but that, that was just a, a big joke. I was just playing a big joke. I didn't mean nothing. Please, please, Mr. Reed, let me go. So you can bring the sheriff here. Sheriff? Why, why, why would I want to bring the sheriff here? Not so smart, boy. Pretending you don't know anything about it after calling me last night. I told you. That was just a joke. And now you know you're going to help me. You're going to carry and dig. Strong back like yours should be able to get the whole thing done in right smart time. Carry? Dig? Mr. Reed? But... In the parlor, boy. Get in the parlor. That's where she is. Right where she was when you called last night. Now get in the parlor. Don't you understand? My pa's hurt. I gotta get to him. He's over to the county hospital. In the parlor, I told you, in the parlor. Now the next shot will be closer. And the next one even closer. Until. Now you get in the parlor. This is Reed. Mr. Reed. She, she, she's sick. She, she's all in a heap on the floor. Pick her up. She's dead. She's been shot. You're trying to make out like you didn't know, huh? Pick her up, boy, and carry her out the but barn. I didn't know. I didn't. I was Mr. Reed. I didn't. It was just a joke. And now you know for sure there ain't no joke out there in Reed's place, huh? Now pick her up. Pick her up. Take her to the barn. And we'll give Emily a decent resting place. Too good, Mary Lee, but there is hope. He does want to see Ted. Did you get in touch with him? I talked to him just before I came over here. He's on his way over. Can I see Mr. Loper, Doctor, please? No, I'm afraid not, Mary Lee. You better wait out here for Ted. Yes, sir. Ted. Ted, boy. I better get in there. Ted. Oh, it's me, Mr. Loper, Dr. Murray. Ted's on his way here now. I want to see my boy. I want to tell him. Try to be quiet. Just try and rest. But I've got to tell Ted. When his ma died, I tried to do all I could. Tried to be everything. I got to tell him how I tried. Tell him I love him. He's a good boy, Doctor. Ted's a good boy. You've got to rest, Mr. Loper. Come on, no more no more talk. Please, now. I want to see my boy. Ted. Doctor, how is he? He's asleep now, Mary Lee. He'll sleep for a while. Now, we're doing all we can. Look, as soon as Ted gets here, you have him get get in touch with me. Yes, Doctor. Oh, Ted, hurry. Your pa needs you. Put her over there, boy. Near the stall. Now 
take that shovel and start digging. Please let me go, Mr. Ree. I, I promise I won't tell. My paws hurt. Please, Mr. Ree. Dig, boy, and dig deep enough and wide enough for two. Near one o'clock. You ain't done too good for a boy with such a strong back. Miss Ree, please let me go to my pa. Come with me if you like. I'll, I'll come back with you. Do anything you want, I promise. But let me see him. Please. Mr. Reed, please. There's some things a man's got to do. Stop an evil lying mouth, protect himself, work his farm. But I love my pa. He needs me. I love too, boy. I love this farm and it needs me. I have to tend it. Nurse it, make it strong. Pa! Help me, Pa! It was Emily who kept the farm from being strong and healthy. She said so. She was all dried up, and she made the land dry up. And me. And now it'll be different. Now dig, young Lopa. And we'll get on with it. What time did you say it was when Ted called? 11.30. Nearly two hours ago. Oh, doctor, he's all right, isn't he? Ted's all right. He, he should have been here long ago. Ted's all right, Mary Lee. We'd have heard if he weren't. Maybe the truck broke down on this heat. But he'll be here. Don't worry. Don't worry, Mary I can't, I can't, I can't anymore, Mr. Reed. I'm sick with worry. I, I can't do any more. Go ahead and kill me. I, I don't care now. Do it now. Oh, yeah, it's the heat, boy. You can take a rest there this time. No, take a rest for a while, and then you can get on. <laughs> Please let me go to my pa. Let me see him. Take a rest, boy. He needs me. Is it him needs you or you him? Well, oh boy, which is it? It's both. You can't live without love and, and needing. And without it, I'd, I'd be just as soon dead. So kill me now. Or let me go to my pa. Man can't live with hate. That's why I had to stop Emily. There was no love here, and I, I had to make room for it. But, Mr. Reed, I've got love. I don't have to look for it, and it's killing me not to show it. So don't make no difference. You kill me or I die inside. Please, but, please. I, I, I'd help you if I could. It's, it's not easy to watch a thing die inside. I did it. For 30 years I did it, and I know how hard a thing it is. But what can I do? The farm would die if I wasn't here. I, I got a lot to do. The grave will be finished, and the lie poured. Then I can work in peace. The lie? The lie, Mr. Reed. If you use the lie, they'll know you aren't telling the truth when you say your order wasn't delivered. Huh? When you call the warehouse and tell them your order's not come, and the lie's not on the truck, they'll know you're not telling the truth. Well, there's much in what you say, but I need it. The lie will make you and Emily part the soil. Let me, let me go, please. No, what am I going to do? Mr. Reed, please let me go. Oh, I need it. I've got to get to my pa. Emily, Emily, what should I do? Oh, boy, what are you doing? Oh. Tell what happens to me. I got him. You. I go the gun. I go there. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. <clears throat> it's all right, boy. Yes, it well. I, uh, I didn't mean. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, oh, you pa. Emily, why did I think I could let you rest alone? Why? Suspense. You've been listening to Arrest for Emily. Written for Suspense by Beryl Firestone. 
Heard in tonight's story were Abby Lewis as Emily, Bill Smith as Oren, and Lee Graham as Mary Lee. Others in the cast included Larry Robinson and Ralph Bell. Listen again next week when we return with A Grave is for Sleeping by Edna Rowe. Another tale well calculated to keep you in 